The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast, College Edition, featuring Rob Waldco and Joe Youngblood. PA Power Wrestling. PA Power Wrestling. Pennsylvania is wrestling. Hey, wrestling fans, welcome to another week of the open room with Rob and Joe. This week, we're going to talk about some PA hammers that are committed to college. Rob's going to talk a little bit about Iowa and the Three Musketeers, as Jeff likes to call them. And then we're going to preview the 10 weight classes at this weekend's Las Vegas Invitational. We even got a little surprise in store for you uh, before the end. And then we're going to finish up with an interview with Virginia Tech's hammer at 184, Zach Zavatsky. So before going any further, I just want to talk about two guys from PA that, that committed to college and took a step in the right direction in their future this week. Uh, first, we have Jacob Ely from Hope, Hopewell, uh, surge winner. I'm sure Jeff wants us to mention that. And state medalist, he made his verbal commitment to Pitt Johnstown. You know, uh, we're excited about that. See another guy from PA staying in state going to Pitt Johnstown who's just got a, a dynamic great program there uh, at the division two level and the other one junior pennsylvania another pennsylvania hammer two-time state champ sam hillegas from north hills made his verbal commitment to the virginia tech Hokies. and you know rob i, I think you can agree and everyone's paying attention virginia tech's doing a phenomenal job of recruiting pennsylvania recruiting overall and just just building putting in building blocks for the future and, and hillegas is probably of that class that probably might be the crown jewel of that recruiting class right now, but who knows with, with what they're pulling off right now. What do you think about that, Rob? Yeah, both both guys I've watched wrestle quite a bit. Um, Hillegas, he's come and done some freestyle in our room uh, back in the day. He's a stud. I think Jacob Ely is pretty underrated. You know, fifth in the state last year. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get in the finals this year. I think Pitt Johnstown got a good one there, and uh, certainly Virginia Tech uh, got an absolute blue chip with, uh, with Hillegas. Um, moving forward a little bit, uh, like Joe said, we're going to spend a lot of this episode highlighting the CKLV. But before we do, we'll jump into Iowa's results, um, namely the Pennsylvania guys, the three Musketeers, as Jeff calls them. Uh, the first Musketeer, Spencer Lee, he sat out this week versus uh, Purdue. They wrestled Perez. Perez, I don't know if that was maintenance, if it's anything serious or what, but obviously um, you know something to keep an eye on. But in uh, I guess more important news, Michael Kemmer, it was announced today, will be out the remainder of the season with surgery. I suspect that he will likely be able to get a sixth year, uh, a medical red shirt, but um, definitely giving the best wishes to Michael. Um, hope he gets a full recovery and he's able to jump on the mat next year uh, as tenacious as ever. But to the action. So we talked about last week that some of the Pennsylvania guys wrestled some of the, the better guys on Purdue's team. You know, starting off, Austin DeSanto, he went out, beat Ben Thornton. Uh, Thornton, solid guy. Uh, DeSanto beat him 5-2, to two, which was a little bit different than what we had kind of uh, listed him as before. He didn't steamroll the guy. He didn't get down early. It was just very workmanlike. Uh, the things didn't come early. He had a pretty nice shrug, rode the guy hard, got out on bottom. So it uh, definitely looked like he diver- diversified his skills a little bit and you know, was able to win a match where he didn't just run a guy over. And then Max Murin, guy that I'm high on. Goes out, beats Nate Limix, who is ranked uh, one spot ahead him, ahead of him. Beats him 5 nothing, very workmanlike. Rode the dog crap out of him. Um, got the only takedown of the match. Looked really, really good. And uh, then 170 or 157, excuse me, Caleb Young went out and pinned Griffin Perriot. Uh, Perriot, again, highly recruited guy coming out of high school. Uh, 0-0 at the break. And then Young puts a tough ride on him. Just works, works, works. Catches him in position, puts him on his back. Of course, Iowa, they will be wrestling Iowa State this weekend, where 33, DeSanto will meet up with uh, mega recruit Austin Gomez, and then you'll see Murin take on Ian Parker. So both PA guys will certainly be pushed again this week, which will be interesting to see, see how they hold up. Um, so before we get into the Cliff Keen preview, anything you uh, you want to get off your chest, Joe, or are you ready to go? I'm ready to get in. I'm I'm excited about this weekend. You know, going to watch some uh, some wrestling from out in Vegas from the comforts of my living room. You know, just getting in and, and looking at these 10 weight classes and over 100 ranked wrestlers competing out there. And what is, you know, just a phenomenal tournament, phenomenal lineup. And some of these weight classes are just going to be just 
tremendous wrestling and and a lot of a lot of highly ranked guys going head to head as early as the quarterfinals. Just the way that the bracket's going to fall, and, and it's going to be it's going to be you know fun to watch. So what our plan is here, guys, is I'm going to break down the first few weights. Um, you know, I was responsible for doing more of the research on the, the lighter weights. Joe did the heavier. So I'll kind of lead the charge here, talk about a few weights. We'll stop. Joe will get to throw his two cents in. We might argue a little bit and then go from there. And then Joe will take over the heavier weights. Um, what our plan is later this week, once the pre-seeds come out, is Joe and I are going to have a little contest where we predict the top four. We're going to set up a scoring system and see who nails it on the head. But uh, we don't want to do that right now. We want to make sure that the seeds are out so there's no uh, – you know, big discrepancies between now and Friday. I'm just going to throw out there. Well, I'm just, I, my, my two cents on that. I, I want to see the brackets, the pre-seeds, and then get into the lab and go through my bracketology. And it'll be good practice trial run, you know, to, to beat you at Vegas and a uh, precursor for what's going to happen at the scuffle. And again, with Ensign of Blaze come March. So I just want to throw it out there to everybody, to everyone. We're not doing the Midlands? Uh, we could do Midlands. I mean, if you want to go for four, uh, try me. It's cool. Yeah, why not? So uh, starting off at 125, you know, what we'll do is we will start by letting you guys know some of the better um, PA wrestlers to follow, whether they wrestle for a Pennsylvania school or they're natives. Um, so starting off, you know, Gage Curry, he wrestles up at American. He's 4-0 and on the year. He was a national qualifier last year. Um, hasn't wrestled a ton yet this year. He's 4-0. and uh, I think he's battling a little injury, but I, I suspect he'll be back this weekend from what I'm hearing. Uh, tough kid. You know, he was a 113-pounder in high school, so he had some size to put on in college, but certainly has acclimated well to the Division One level, qualifying for the national tournament as a redshirt freshman. Uh, he's a guy to look out for this weekend. And then uh, two-time All-American from, from Pennsylvania, from Bethlehem Catholic, wrestling at Nebraska, Zeke Moisey. Uh, we talked about him a little bit last week, how he has maybe not looked his best, uh, looks like he's probably hurt at least a little bit, but you know, heck if he's going to write the ship, this is definitely a good tournament to do so. And, um, he'll get some stiff competition. So we'll see where he's really at outside of those guys, you know, kind of the, the top contenders you, you look at, uh, Sebastian Rivera from Northwestern. He's ranked number two right now. He's a reigning all American, uh, Tough kid, high, high motor, really, really good on his feet, wrestles really hard, and he's a guy that I think is probably the class of this weight class, but he'll certainly be pushed. Uh, he'll be pushed by Ronnie Bresser, another All-American from Oregon State. Uh, of course, Bresser is the guy that handed Spencer Lee his first loss at the Midlands. Uh, Louis Hayes, he's ranked number six by way of Virginia. Uh, he was round to 12 last year. Uh, I, I'm really imp- impressed by this guy. I think he can make a big jump this year. And then Sean Russell, uh, formerly of Edinburgh, now wrestling for Minnesota. Uh, he's 5-1 and one on the year. He has losses to uh, lost to Piccinini, uh, but has wins over Curry and Moisey from last year. Uh, of those contenders, uh, Sebastian Rivera, he beat Hayes in the blood round last year, 8-0, went on to beat Brewer 12-2. In, or Bresser, excuse me, 12-2 to two in uh, the next round. He's also beaten uh, Russell at the Midlands. So, you know, all of those top four contenders, Rivera's wrestled, and he's kind of handled all of them. So, again, I think he's a guy that uh, I would suspect kind of comes out ahead in this tournament. And then, um, you know, a dark horse you could look at, Jay Schwarm from Northern Iowa. He actually uh, pinned Ryan Milhoff at this tournament last year. Uh, if you guys haven't seen him wrestle, watch him. He's a ton of fun. He's really funky. He can put guys on their back. He can lose matches that you're surprised about, but he's not an easy draw. He's someone that I don't think anyone really is looking forward to wrestle. Uh, next weight, 133. This one is absolutely stacked with Pennsylvania power and star power from the other 49 states as well. Uh, starting off with the PA guys, yeah, you got Luke Pletcher. Um, some people might have called him boring in the past, and maybe he is, but he's 7-0 this year. He's got six bonus point victories, so he's starting to light up the scoreboard. He's looked really good. Um, you got Ethan Lezak. He has a one loss on the year to Dayton Fix. He's, of, of course, up a weight class from last year. He was at 125, now at 133. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do here. Uh, Corbin Myers, another Edinburgh guy, transferred to Virginia Tech. Uh, he's 0-2 on the year. He, or, excuse me, he's ranked 12th. And then Mickey Phillippe, ranked 17th, uh, is a guy that I know that we're excited to see how he competes and how he, hit, he hangs with the big guys. In terms of uh, the guys outside, 
Pennsylvania, you got Nick Suriano, reigning national finalist. Stevon Micic, reigning national finalist, ranked number three. John Ernesti from Missouri, ranked 10. Dylan Duncan, ranked 11. Uh, there's a lot of cross-contamination at this weight. You have Suriano, who had beaten Lezak in the past. Micic, he's 3-1 and one versus Pletcher. You got Pletcher, who's beaten Myers twice. You got Corbin Myers, who's lost to Ernesti twice. You have Mickey Philippi, who beat Myers, and he beat Duncan, who are both ranked ahead of him. So I think he's looking to climb. And, uh, yeah, a lot of these guys have wrestled each other before, so it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Um, dark horse perspective, I, I think Mickey Philippi is a guy that I look at as a dark horse. He's beaten two guys that are ranked ahead of him. He'll probably get a low seed, but uh, he's wrestling really well, and I'll be excited to see how he does. Match I'm probably looking forward to most, though, if it happens, is Suriano and Michich out of these two weight classes. I think that one's a chess match. But uh, in reality, the semis at 33 are going to be just absolutely stacked no matter what. Uh, Joe, what are, your, what are your thoughts on these first two weights? It's a lot to digest there. To, to piggyback what you said about Zeke Moisey, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, have no, I have no knowledge of this, but it seems like the, the time he was the most healthy in his career was the year he made the run to the national final. Now, did he just catch fire at the right time? I, I don't know, but he just he's been he's he's a, he's a warrior that just had to battle through injuries uh, after injury the next year with a dislocated elbow. He just you know, he's just uh he just had to struggle with that and that's unfortunate. Uh but like you said, I hope he writes the ship. Uh, I wish he was still at West Virginia, but uh, you know, I understand, you know, he moved on to coaching change. So, you know, we still wish him the best uh, you know, from the Pennsylvania perspective. Uh, Sebastian Rivera is kind of like a guy, like you know, in my opinion, like was a little bit under the radar last year, and, and had a really nice NCAA tournament that, that put him on the map. He's not sneaking up on anybody anymore. I think he's the class of that weight. Uh, you know, Ronnie Bresser, you know, claim to fame might be the only guy to ever beat Spencer Lee in the college level. I mean, maybe it's a little premature to say that, but the level at which well, Thomas Hill beat Lee once as well. Uh, oh, oh, yes, you're you're correct. I uh, gave him the first loss. I should say that'd be the, the first loss. Would be a trivia question that, that'll go down in history, similar to uh, who was the guy that beat Kale Sanderson in his redshirt year. I, I really think it comes down to you know Rivera and Brewer, or Bresser. I'm sorry, in this weight class, uh, when when the dust settles, that they're they're the two best in the in the weight class. Uh, Sean Russell was re- wrestling well, new change of scenery as well after leaving Edinburgh. You know, as we talked about coaching change and. I just feel that, but I, I feel everyone stays healthy. It's, it's going to be Bresta Rivera in that, in that final. Um, just the way it looks like it's going to pan out. I want to see how the seeds fall and see, you know, what happens uh, through the tournament. I'm looking forward to watching it. But it, it's kind of like a two-horse race in my opinion. 33, uh, put a bunch of names in the hat, and let's start drawing them out because that's, that's basically the way that they could finish. In, in some regards, you know, you made the comment about Pletcher being boring, but then, you know, that was the, that was the MO on him. He just kind of gets, you know, lead and he, and he's great defensively and keeps guys from scoring on him, but doesn't do a whole lot. Well, so far in a year, and maybe it's a product of his co- competition, but he's really opening it up and he's shown a different side to him. So hopefully that continues. Uh, Rob, to be honest, I, I, I would, uh, there's so many matches I'd love to see in, in this combination of stuff. And like you said, all the cross-contamination. I mean, finals, I, yeah, I guess Suriano and Michich would be would be the ideal final. But, you know, I want to see Pletcher, Suriano, you know, Lezak and... I'll tell you what, and, yeah, Lezak and Michich, if that happens, I mean, Michich, his last two, I guess not his last two losses, but he took two losses to Gross last year. Both times he got turned. Yeah. I mean, think about that. I, I think that... That, that's going to be a tough matchup for him. I mean, he might pick him apart, but I mean, if you're going to get turned by by someone, Lezak's probably the guy to do it. So let me let me ask you this: uh, based upon what you've seen so far, and we just have a small sampling, how do you feel Lezak has adjusted to this weight class, like the the moving up in weight? Do you think it's hurt him? Do you think it's it's hurt his game? Was it the right move? You know, give me your thoughts. I think it was necessary. Like, if they're bumping him up as a senior into this weight class, 25 was probably impossible or, or damn near impossible for him. Uh, in terms of adjustment, ask me on Sunday, and I'll let you know, because he's going to get tested here right away. I mean, you look at the top six, eight guys, he's going to run into a guy like, like Dylan Duncan, John Ernesti, Mickey Philippi, Corbin Myers, someone like that in the quarterfinals. So, yeah, those aren't guys that are necessarily – necessarily pushing for national titles right now but those that's round of 16 matches at nationals like that's that's the real deal so we'll see what he's all about then 
if you're asking me if you're asking me who's winning this right now that's tough you can look at different combinations there could be four or five different guys that find their way into the finals and this depending just how you know who gets hot and again it's early in the season we can't you know you can put some stock into it winning winning vegas uh, but it's a long way from march so you know a win here uh albeit great and a lot of recognition and get you a lot of ink uh, you know maybe maybe you know for some doesn't necessarily translate into success down the road but i don't know i, I guess uh, you know, I'm going to save my pick because I don't want you to, to copy it when we have our little competition later in the week. So I'll, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to say there's a bunch of matches I'd like to see, uh, including Lizak Suriano, Lizak and Micic, Pletcher and Pletcher and Suriano. I think would be a pretty good match. So it's uh, I guess we'll all have to wait and see. Yeah, so I, I agree. We'll keep our picks confidential for the next few days. Uh, jump into 141. Uh, the lead dog for Pennsylvania is definitely Mikey Carr out of Illinois. He's ranked seventh right now. I hope he wrestles. He's 0-1 on the year. His only loss is a barn burner overtime match to Jaden Ironman where he had the lead for much of the match. I have no idea if he's hurt, if they were just sitting him out or what, but I hope and expect he's here. And then a guy that I think is a little bit under the radar is Sam Krivis. Um He was in a, a national qualifier for Virginia last year, has wins this year over Sam Turner and Chad Red. He's down a weight from 149. So I think that's probably a good weight for him. He's not that tall of a kid. Um, he's probably pretty powerful at 41. So it'll be interesting to see how he matches up here. Uh, outside those PA guys, you got Joey McKenna, ranked number two. Um, Jaden Ironman, ranked number three. Uh, McKenna seems to have Ironman's number. He's beaten him uh, at least once in freestyle, once in folk style the last year. Uh, outside those guys, I mean, those are the two and three in the country. You got Mitch McKee. He's new to 141 as well, um, just like Krivis, but he's coming up a weight. He was 3-2 and two at the NCAAs last year. Um, hasn't really hit his stride in folk style yet. He's a tremendous freestyle wrestler, but looks good right now, and we'll see how good he looks this weekend. Um, kind of the surprise is, is Matt Finley from Utah Valley State. Uh, he was 11-9 and nine last year, uh, but already this year is ranked 8th. He's beaten Van Brill, uh, Chad Red, Orts from Clarion, and uh, Tristan Moran, so he's certainly one to keep an eye on. And then Chad Red, he's ranked tenth right now. He doesn't look good, but you know what? He had eleven losses last year, um, so he's a guy that when he needs to turn it on, he can do so. So I would not sleep on Chad Red. From an underdog perspective, I'm looking at Sam Krivis. Like I mentioned, he's unranked to uh, to have a good tournament. And then uh, Keenan Store from Michigan, he's ranked number nineteen. He was a guy that had high hopes going into Iowa State. Kind of had an up and down year last year, transferred, um, but he's shown a lot of ability, especially in freestyle. So it'll be interesting to see if that transitions here. Oh, it's one forty nine. Uh, PA power wise, you got Brock Zachrell. He's up up a weight class. He's nine and zero to start the year. He's ranked number eight. Uh, really hungry for that All American plaque. Uh, this is a good precursor to the national tournament. Uh, you got Trevor Elflin from Drexel. Uh, he's not ranked. He's six and four on the year, but he's a guy that we talked about a lot in the preseason. And Coach Azevedo is really high on. So I'll be interested to see how he competes this weekend. Uh, what's interesting about this weight for me is all of the shifts. So I'll go over some of the top guys real quick. You got Micah Jordan. He's a two time All American, ranked number two. He's also won this tournament twice. You got Anthony Ashnall. He's a sixth-year senior, three-year, three-time All-American, ranked number three. You got Grant Leith and Max Thompson. Both those guys are former All-Americans. Uh, you got Fine Silver from Duke. He's ranked ninth. Uh, he's down a weight class. You have Austin O'Connor. He's six and one on the year. He's a redshirt freshman from North Carolina. We mentioned him last week. He had he got a win over Josh Maruka. He beat Tanner Smith from UTC, who is a, a big-time freshman coming up. Uh, has two wins over Josh Heil, uh, beat Steve Blyze last year. He's a, he's a stud. He's a stud freshman. But what I was saying was interesting is there's a lot of shift here. So you look at Zach Roll and Ashnault, they're both up a weight. Ashnault didn't wrestle last year, so he's kind of like new to the weight times two. You got Micah and Feinsilver down from last year. Then you have O'Connor coming uh, in as a freshman. And the guys that have been there are Grant Leith and Max Thompson. So there's a, a lot of guys that really haven't wrestled. They've been at different weight classes. There's not a lot of uh, like data on, on results, who's beat who, who's wrestled who. So that makes it for a fun weight because you, you really don't know who's going to be on top. Uh, Joe, what are your thoughts on these two weights? Uh, who do you like? What matchups are you looking forward to? I think if, from a perspective of 141, it, it, it's kind of a, a – 
a two horse race, and I, I really like Ironman and McKenna. Ironman's fun to watch from a top to bottom perspective, or you know, talent perspective. One forty one, not one of the deeper weight classes as far as you know, ranked guys, and and you know, again, rankings don't mean a whole lot, but they're usually a pretty accurate indicator. Uh, so, but not to say it won't be an exciting weight class because you're gonna have a lot of guys that maybe have that breakout tournament and win because there's still enough top end talent in the weight class that if an, an upset does happen, you know, you mentioned like a Sam Crevis who's not ranked can can you know could be maybe a little bit of a, a coming out party for him, or you know Chad Red who who is definition of up and down. And, you know, again, you can start to put things together and gain that confidence to keep it more on the upside than, than the down. Uh, you know, Finley, again, another guy, he was 11 and 9. He wrestled 18 matches and lost nine of them. Uh, I'm sorry, nine, wrestled 20 matches and lost nine of them last year. And, you know, already he's he's up to rank, being ranked eighth in the country. So there's a guy maybe that, that is poised to, to even make a further jump from eighth up. So, you know, 141 is wide, wide open. Uh to a point, I think you have you have top end talent in McKenna and Ironman, but then from then on out, not saying they're untouchable, but it's wide open after that uh, for a lot of guys to to make an impact in the weight class. Uh, One forty nine. Uh, I'm excited to see Zacherel compete. You know, he's, again, he's he was close, or he, he was. I thought Clarion's best shot to get an All American last year it didn't happen. He's undefeated so far. He's ranked eighth. But like you said, there's a, there, this this weight class in general here at 49 is gonna be interesting just because it's so topsy turvy. Like you don't know to get get to expect. You got guys that came down, guys that are going up. Uh, how are they adjust the weight? How how challenged have they been so far early in the, this early in the season? Uh, I'm excited to see Micah Jordan at this weight and see just how good he looks being down. Uh, Ashnault again, I I do like the Rutgers program. I know it's not Pennsylvania, but I just I just like how they've built it, and they've made you know they, they've made themselves a household name, and they're no longer a, a doormat program. And I just I just like what they do, and Ashnault's a big part of of making that happen. You know, he's six year senior, third, three time All American. You know, he's you know he's one of the guys that helped put them back on the map. Uh, Grant Leith, again, another guy could, that could that could. He, step in and win that win the tournament uh austin o'connor he said just he just keeps getting better and he's young so it you know he and, he, and he's made a living so far of knocking off top guys and it's he seems fearless going into it so i'm, I'm excited to see what what he brings to the table uh, as far as pa guys besides zachary elf elf um elfin we talked about and you you mentioned it a guy that we're both pretty high on because of you know how coach acevedo talked him up like what a where he came from, not highly recruited, and the work he puts in to to be where he's at. So, you know, as far as those two weight classes, some some top end talent, but still in a lot of unknowns. I, you know, I guess I, I gave wishy washy answers there, but there's just there's too many too many question marks in, in both. Um, and again, we get to we get to see how it all unfolds in a few days. Yeah, it's, that's a fun way. The more I, I, I talked about it and looked at what you were saying, I'm like, man, this is going to be a really, really good weight and really fun weight to watch. Um, I think the rankings are certainly going to shift on this one uh, after this weekend. You know, jumping to 57, uh, from a PA power perspective, uh, Taylor Bramani is, is really the only guy of note. Uh, he, of course, wrestles for Pitt. He's ranked number 10. Uh, he had Berger in overtime in this tournament last year. He had him on the ropes. Um, against the rest of the field, you know, he's 0-2 versus Monday, both 3-1 matches. Uh, Nino, Bonacorsi, and Philippi get a lot of chatter from us and others about the pit program, but this might be their best wrestler. Romani looks really tough. Um, he certainly, when he turns it on, he's really, really tough to beat. Uh, outside of him, you got Alec Pantaleo. He's the reigning champ from Michigan, ranked number three. You know, he lost this year to Luan, his teammate. People are making a big deal about it, but you know what? Uh, Pintaleo took like three or four losses in a row last year to start the year. When this guy's on, he's as good as anyone. So I, I think if he doesn't wrestle well here, it's, it's room for concern. But until then, I'm not really sweating it. Uh, Tyler Berg, Berger excuse me, from Nebraska, two-time All-American. Last year was really up and down. I think he was the eight or the nine seed at the national tournament. Took a lot of losses. Um, 
he's zero and two versus Pantaleo. He's one and one versus Monday, but he's another guy that he didn't wrestle well all last year. Goes to the national tournament, takes third, wrestles just balls to the wall. And he's five and zero this year and looks really good, really aggressive on his feet. So he looks better than ever. I'll be interested to see how he competes. Um, Keyshawn Hayes from Ohio State. He was third at Vegas last year at 149. Uh, he's had a few tight matches already this year. I, I have to think he's probably pretty small at this weight class. So it'll be interesting to see how he competes with some of these bigger guys. But you know, unfortunately for his sake, they're just so loaded at 4149. He can't really find a home at his optimal weight. You got Ryan Deacon, uh, ranked number six. This is a guy that I'm really high on. He was at 49 last year. Somehow, the, the guy's huge. I don't think 57s. He's going to be small at all. He has a really high attack rate, really, really good leg attacks. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm picking him to win it. I know we're keeping everything confidential, but I love this guy. And then you got Monday. He was round to 12 last year. Uh, was good last year, not great. You know, pulled a big upset versus Joey LaValle at Nationals, put himself in the round of 12. But he has really high upside. He wrestled a tough one with uh, Hydley at uh, the Hokie Open. So I, I think he's certainly ready to go, and he's looking to have a big tournament. Joe, what are your thoughts on 57? Who do you like? Wow. You've thrown it out there. You're going at it, you know, guns blazing, picking Ryan Deacon to win it. I'll, t- I'll tell you what. I saw him beat the snot out of Tyler Berger in freestyle at the U23 trials or, or open last year. So I think they'll be on the same side, and I like his chances to get through, you know, get to the finals over there. He might be on the same side as Pantaleo, but I think he could beat him too. Bold statements. Love it. Uh Romani, like you said, conceivably could be exactly what you said. I, I will agree with you on that. I'll disagree with you on Deacon, but I'm going to keep and play my cards close to my chest on this one. Uh, I think from a PA standpoint, Romani uh, does metal here uh, in this weight, um, just because he, he's on he's on the cusp of doing uh, of doing big things. Uh, he just got to you know work continually to put it together. Uh, as far as I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you my finals right now. You can see it on Twitter that later this week when we get those pre seeds. But uh, Panaleo and Berger, uh, you know, something about the Nebraska guys. I just I don't know that sometimes just inconsistency it, it, it comes to mind when we talk about Nebraska guys, and you know it's it's odd. But uh, you know, like you said, Berger was so so last year and he turned it on. Like you know, maybe maybe he bucks that trend. And, and keeps it going all year. But you look at some of the other guys, like, you know, when talking about Isaiah White, we talk about Chad Red, and, you know, there's there's just not, maybe not hitting on all cylinders at all times like they should. And that's easy for, you know, for me to say. However, you know, if you're going to be one of the big dogs, you should be, you know, showing your teeth all the time, not just sometimes. <laughs> so the, I think this weight class uh, will be uh, – a wrestler from the Big Ten will win this weight class come come this weekend. I'm not going to tell you which one. So who? Uh, let's get into 65, 74. What do you got, Joe? All right. So 165. We got top our top ranked guy or guy from PA in this weight class is Jake Wenzel, South Park High School graduate. He's uh, wrestles for Pitt and he's ranked 18th right now. He's only one on one in the season, and his only loss of those two is to ninth rake Bryce Steyert from Northern Illinois in that dual meet they had. And we talked about that last week, the big win for Pitt. Rob, before we refer, let me ask this. Like we look at some of these, some of these teams and they're coming in with seven and oh, you know, eight and two records. And then, you know, there's the other side of the spectrum. We talked a little bit about this earlier in the year about what's good and what's not and opinions and wrestling and too much wrestling, not enough. You know, here Pitt comes in with only two matches on the year for most of their guys and and the, the most of the regulars, what is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? They gonna, it, it, you know, is, are they using this as a, to knock rust off? You know, what, what's your thought on it? That's a good question. I, I have to look over their schedule real quick, but I do find it odd that they didn't hit an open. You know, most of these teams have hit opens. Obviously, Pitt hasn't, but I'm sure they have the rationale, right? Coach Gavin has a plan, and um, there's probably a reason behind it. But yeah, certainly have to get those matches in somewhere, right? And more than likely, they're going to get them as the as the season progresses. Other top guys, rank guys overall, number five, Logan Massa from Michigan. Number six, Branson Ashworth from Wyoming. Uh, Bryce Steyer, as I mentioned earlier, he's ranked eighth from University of Northern Iowa. And number 10, ranked Isaiah White from Nebraska. And you know, we look at Massa 
and he uh, he's two zero on the season. And again, we talk about only having two matches. His big, you know, his biggest win is over number twelve Cole Walter from Lehigh. And uh, Mass is a, is a returning All American, and like I said, ranked fifth in the nation. Uh, one guy pretty is interests me, uh, piques my interest upon uh, doing some homework on his weight class. Branson Ashworth from Wyoming. He's got three wins over ranked wrestlers: Cam Coy, Isaiah White, and Chandler Rogers. And Rogers was sixth at the time. Ashworth is now sixth, and and Rogers is is at seven, right behind him where, where Ashworth was prior to that. Uh, he's wrestling really well right now, and he's put up a lot of wins in the past couple years. Uh, but his best performance is two and two at NCAA's. This is a guy I believe like he's like poised and, and come from that that Wyoming program. I'm coached by Mark Branch to you know, make a run for the title and again being a contender in Pittsburgh to to get on the podium. This guy has just come up short, but. You know, he's you know, won, I think, like 80-some or 90-some matches in his career. And just seems like now he's, he's getting these consistently getting wins over these top guys. And, again, early on in the season, am I reading into it too much? Am I just caught with, you know, enamored with what he's done in the resume? Maybe, perhaps. I don't know. But the bottom line is he's putting up big wins right now. So I don't see anything changing moving forward. So it's a guy I'm looking forward to watching. Uh, Bryce Steyer, University of Northern Iowa, Panther train guy. He's 4-1 in the season. His lone loss is a 3-2 loss to number two ranked Evan Wick from Wisconsin. He's a two-time NCAA qualifier. This weight class, he's again another guy that's going to look to maybe post some big wins and, and propel him. You know, he's been close and he's been in the national tournament you know we look down the road as as this being uh you know possibly projecting them and uh you know having their uh you know kind of directing their season how it's going to go maybe this would be a good launch point for for him as well isaiah white nebraska i kind of touched on it before when we talked about i mentioned about uh you know chad red and the inconsistencies, one and three right now in the season, and but he's he, in his defense, he's hit some some tough competition, uh, but he still remain, remains ten because I think that's based upon you know his past performances and the guys he's wrestling. He's not losing to to nobodies, uh, so you know he's uh, he just maybe seems to be a little bit of a funk and you know sometimes coming out of being a season, you're knocking the rust off and you hit some tough competition, and you take some losses maybe you shouldn't. He's a blood round guy from a year ago, and he uh, he was in the quarterfinals and lost in sudden victory to Vincenzo Joseph last year at the NCAA tournament, and you know he was he was right there uh, with some of those guys, and and it didn't it didn't work out after losing the blood round and then you know losing again right thereafter. I'm sorry, losing the quarters and losing right again thereafter. Uh, just unfortunate. I, I just think we need a little bit more consistency. I see a little bit more consistency out of, consistency out of him. Uh, last guy, one sixty five, is is your boy. That I want to talk about Drexel's own uh, Abed Jarrell. Uh, not ranked right now. I'm sorry, ranked. I believe eighteenth right now. However, um, give me a see. You know, the, with a tournament like this and several matches over days, he, with a motor like his and an ability to to you know go hard for the full seven minutes it's going to behoove him uh and it's going to be to his benefit to use that to his advantage when you get in the early season tournaments like this and guys that are going to struggle with their with their conditioning so uh, i think from a perspective of of getting a a medal here i I think he uh he has a pretty good shot like i said i'm not giving any any indicator who i'm picking to win that so moving on to 74 and 74 is going to be one of the of the of the ones I preview. One of the two, the one of the two more interesting weight classes. Uh, we got from Pennsylvania. We got the 11th and the 12th ranked guys in the country. Mikey Labriola from Nebraska. He's eight one in the season. His lone loss was to Ryan Christensen from Wisconsin. He was in a scramble in a match. He was doing fairly well in. Got caught and pinned. You know, he's he's a guy that's been putting up a ton of points, winning a lot of bonus point matches. I said his points eight and one. The other Pennsylvania guys, uh, I'm sorry, Mikey Labrador from Becca High. The other is Tishon Campbell 
from Ohio State. He's the Penn Hills grad. He's ranked 12th in the country, 6-2 and two on the season. His <clears throat> He lost to one of his teammates at the Inter- Ohio Intercollegiate Open, and he lost to Zahid Valencia. I think we've all heard of him before from Arizona State. He's a three-time NCAA qualifier and a guy that you look back on his results and you watch him wrestling just struggled to put it together in March. And, you know, just, you know maybe this is the year. It's, uh, it's kind of do or die for him. You know, we talked about, uh, you know, guys that in their last shot and last chance to do it. And hopefully it's an opportunity for him to to do just that. Other t- top-ranked guys in his weight class, we have uh, number three ranked Miles Amin from the University of Michigan. He's 2-0 in the season. <clears throat> he was third here a year ago. He was also third at the NCAA Blaze. Uh, big win this year earlier in the season over jo- Jordan Cutler, ranked number seventh from Lehigh. And he might very well be the guy to be at this weight class. Might, I say. Daniel Lewis ranked fourth. He's 3-0 in the season. He's a three-time All-American. Unbelievably consistent throughout his career. And another guy that's going to be pressing for the finals uh, at this weight class. Uh, you know, Lewis has been a guy that's been, again, uh, a pleasure to watch and a model of consistency coming out of that Missouri program. And Taylor Lewan from Northern Iowa, ranked number ninth. He's 5 0 this season. He's another guy from that Northern Iowa team that, you know, he's been on the cusp a few times, but struggled come March, you know, qualifying twice for an NCAA tournament. And he was fourth at Vegas a year ago. So, Rob, I, I gave you my. Gave you gave you a little bit of of info on those uh, 165 and 174. What's your take on these two weight classes? 165 doesn't quite have the star power that uh, you know 49, 33, 74 has, but it's a good weight. It'll be interesting to see if Mesa or Massa is uh, up to full speed. I think he had an injury last year. I watched a couple interviews with him on Flow where. He alluded to the fact that he wasn't 100, percent but as a freshman, he was lights out. I, I think he's probably the guy to beat here, but. You know, Bryce Steiner's a stud. Uh, you have Makai Lewis from Virginia Tech. He took a, a loss to uh, Flynn from Missouri a couple weeks ago. But I know uh, Virginia Tech's really high on him. He's not a guy you want to catch in the quarterfinals. I, I think he can make some noise here. Uh, 74, that's that's an awesome weight. I think Labriola will figure out where he's at here, um, you know, if he's ready to go with these top guys or not. I, I think you're right. Amin might be the class of this weight. He's, I mean – if Zahid and Mark Hall weren't around, this kid, he'd probably have a national title going into his junior year. He's really good. He keeps getting better. Uh, you, you failed to mention David McFadden, who's ranked fifth from Virginia Tech. He's coming from the U23 Worlds. Uh, is he not wrestling? D- did you just kind of think maybe he'd be taking some time off or, or what? Uh, from what I've read, it said uh, no David Matt McFadden uh, this week. This weekend now, I could be wrong, and this was a report came off of Flow, uh, and that's what I went off of. So I didn't include him in my preview of the weight class. Uh, but if we are putting him in that in that fold in that mix, uh, it makes this weight class just that much better. You know, it was already fun, and it was going to be interesting to say the least. But if McFadden is in the in the mix, it's gonna it's, it's gonna gonna make from from for more better wrestling. Uh, but from what was reported earlier in the week. Uh, no, no McFadden. Cool. Yeah, I, I figured I might have missed something there, but figured I'd ask. Uh, that kind of puts a damper on the the weight a little bit. But, yeah, Taylor Lewan, he's fun to watch. Um, be nice to see him and Lewis get it on. But, yeah, it should be some good action. And like I said, I, I think of the two weights, the guy I'm excited to see is how uh, Mac- Makai Lewis competes at this weight. All right, so moving on, 84. And this is where it gets fun. Uh, Maybe I'm a little bit biased because this is the weight I one of the weights I previewed. But let me give you this lineup and tell me I'm wrong that this might be the best weight class at at Vegas this weekend. We'll talk about PA guys first. We have Zach Zavatsky, who Zavatsky, sorry that we're going to be uh, talking to later in the in the podcast. He's num- senior from uh, Virginia Tech via Greater Latrobe High School. He's ranked fourth in the country. He's five and on the season. He was an All American in 2018. He's five and two in Vegas last year to place fourth. Uh, two years ago in Vegas, uh, you know he had wins over the likes of Miles Martin, and uh, you know he's just been consistently beating the top guys in the country, and uh, hasn't equated to necessarily the success at the NCAA tournament, but 
as we talk to him later, hopefully we get some more answers out of him. And I just think right now, as a senior, he's got to be on a mission. Uh, there, Pennsylvania wrestler to make note of his Nino Bonacorsi, Rob, another one of Rob's boys. That he's real high on. He's uh, from Pitt. He's via Bethel Park High School. He's ranked 13th in the country right now. He's one on one in the season, and his lone loss coming at the hands of Drew Foster from Northern uh, Iowa that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, like all the pit guys, hasn't wrestled a lot this season. But I definitely think in the stacked weight class, when the dust settles, he's going to be in that in that mix to get to get to the podium, uh, you know, fighting for it. I, and, and when I say fight, and I, Rob will probably agree, it's going to be a flat out dog fight to get on the podium in this weight class. Now to where it gets really interesting, the top ranked guys overall in this weight class. Uh, some of you guys might have heard of Miles Martin from Ohio State. He's ranked number one in the country. He's 1-0 in the season. He's a 2016 champ. He was runner-up last year. He's fifth in 2017. He won Vegas last year. Uh, you know, this is like some people think it's his weight class now, not that Bo Nickel left. I'll throw a few other names out. You, you might you might feel differently. Emery Parker, he's ranked second in the country from Illinois. He's undefeated this season. He was third in NCAAs last year. Uh, a guy that, you know, I just love these these stories where, you know, a guy loses early or loses the first match, gets upset, and then just c- catches fire through the wrestlebacks. And here was a guy, and I, I host a wrestling pool every year with some buddies here in my, my neck of the woods. And I forget who had Emery Parker, but he was just a machine coming through that, that consolation bracket. He won seven straight bouts to finish third place. And you, you wonder what he would have done had he not got tripped up early on. Or maybe that's the motivation he needed to flip a switch. But here's a guy that's going to you know, be first of probably several matches this year between him and Miles Martin possibly happening at Vegas. You have Taylor Venz from Nebraska. I see a trend, you know, a trend here at these, these uh, Big Ten guys. Uh, ranked third. He's 5-0 on the season. He was fourth in still base last year, lost to Parker, as and he was just a redshirt freshman. He's like maybe the exception to the rule of guys. That, like when I did some research on Nebraska, that, that of being inconsistent, maybe I'm just looking for someone not to be. But, uh, you know, he's, he's been pretty consistent as a redshirt freshman. We'll see how he follows up this uh, this season, redshirt sophomore year. Max Dean, Cornell, sophomore, is ranked number eighth in the country. He's 2 0 in the season. He was eighth last year at NCAAs as a freshman. Another guy that, that has the potential to to put it on and pour it on at any point in time. Uh, Chip Ness from North Carolina, ninth in the country. He's 4-1 this season. He was 7th in NCAAs last year. He beat Dean in that 7th place match. And then Drew Foster ranked 10th at 184. He's 5-0. and He's a two-time qualifier. He was 7th last year at Vegas. He's a guy that, you know, I don't want to say struggles, but has just had difficulties finishing the job in March. And he's not the only guy in that team, and and I really like what Doug Schwab and that that staff has done at Northern Iowa. They, they've they've made them relevant when it really has been a two horse race in that state with with state and Iowa, and he's he's done a phenomenal job. And I, I don't I'm trying to throw that that around too lightly, but to say that you know put them in the same breath. I mean, you know, we put them in the same breath with Iowa State right now. They're not they're not on Iowa's level, but. They'd run with Iowa for a little bit. It, it, you know, the, there'd be some tough matches. There'd be a lot of toss-ups that they'd have to win. You put them up against Iowa, but you know, the fact of the matter is, they got a lot of guys consistently ranked in that six through twelve range, and have the potential All-American. And it just just one match going their way. Moving on to ninety-seven. Actually, Rob, I want to get your thoughts there. We'll break it there, and then we'll do ninety-seven and heavy and heavyweight together. Because uh, like eighty-four for me is the, of my five weight classes is by far my crown jewel, and uh, I'm just excited to hear what you have to say. So give me give me your thoughts, your initial knee-jerk reaction of of just this plethora of of talent assembled in this weight class. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's one through four in the country at this weight class. Uh, if the seeds fall, as if the flow rankings, you'll have. Martin and Zavatsky in the semis, and then Venz and Emery Parker on the other side. Uh, what's interesting about this weight is Parker and Zavatsky have both beaten Martin before. Zavatsky beat him here uh, two years ago, and then Parker beat him at the NCAs two years ago. So, yeah, Martin, he looks great. He's probably heavily favored to win the Nationals, but you have two guys that have beaten him before that he'll have to get through. So it'll be interesting to see how he does with that. Um in regards to you and I, I think you're right. They have struggled a little bit in March, um, but they have a really good team, at least on paper. They have a lot of guys ranked in that like 6 to 12 range. 
this would be a big tournament for them to, to kind of jump into contention and really put their stamp on things. I would think from a team perspective, you have Ohio State's the clear favorite. Michigan's probably the clear two. And then you and I could come in here and take third if they have a really good tournament. Um, you know, they have some other guys that we didn't mention that, you know, have the ability to play. like Josh Albert, 41, didn't quit, quite make the cut for us, but he's a stud. He was in the finals here last year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the Panthers do. But, yeah, to your point, uh, 84 is an awesome weight. I know that Zavadsky had beaten Dean here last year in a, a barn burner in the quarters. It looks like they might meet up again in that round. So it'll be interesting to see if they get their, their hands on each other and how that goes. Yeah, the 84, I just can't wait. It's well worth the wait. And I, I'm, I'm looking forward to how the seeds fall. I mean, we kind of can, in a way, predict them ourselves, how it's going to happen. But with that said, you never know what the seeding committee is going to say and what they're going to do. And there might be a slight change, which could alter the weight class. But you have several guys that could win this. And that's the great thing about it. For all the talent that's there, it's still kind of wide open. They'll be settled on the mat. So moving to 97, got two PA guys we're going to talk about. The two top-ranked guys is uh, Stephen Wiseau. He's a Lancaster Catholic product. He's now uh, at Drexel. He's ranked ninth in the country. He's a senior. He's 8-1 in the season. His lone loss was to number one ranked Bo Nickel from Penn State in the finals of the Keystone Classic. I believe it was something like 18-4. And he's an NCAA qualifier, and he was sixth last, here last year. And we've talked extensively about him in that Drexel program, so we don't, I don't know if we need to go any further in depth about it. And the other one is your boy, Jake Woodley from North Alleghenies, and he's ranked 15th in the country. And, uh, you know, he's hit some, had some, a few lumps early on in the season, and, you know, this would be a great, uh, you know, talking about launch point for him for his season to get him back on track. We look into the other guys ranked, the top ranked guys in this weight class, and you got some you got some hammers but this just the it's not a this weight class will lend itself to guys not ranked getting getting good matches and, and getting on the podium and getting their name out there but with that said let's go from top to bottom we got number three ranked from ohio state colin moore he hasn't wrestled yet in the season due to wrestling the under 23 world championships but he's a two-time all-american for ohio state and he's a returning champ here Moore's a guy that he's a monster in the regular season, but he's also a guy who just in his two years hasn't put it together in March yet. I mean, he's been an All-American, which is way ahead of the game to a lot of people, which a lot of people would take a two-time All-American in their first two years of wrestling. But for the resume of the guys that he's beaten in those two seasons – I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I set the bar too high. I just, ex- I think I would expect more out of him. No pun intended. Uh, then we have Nathan Traxler from Stanford. He's number eight in the country. Six and one on this season. His lone loss is to Pat Brookey from Princeton, and he was returning to the Blake qualifier. You know, he doesn't have a a whole lot of quality wins to him, and he had a, a pretty close match with Brookey at the Princeton Open. And if with 97 being a somewhat open weight class beyond the number one guy in the country, this could be an opportunity for Traxler to, again, get his name out there. And we got Christian Brunner from Purdue. Number He's ranked number 10th in the country. He's 4-1 in the season. His lone losses to Nathan Traxler, 6-3 earlier on. Uh, I know, we're just, like I said, we still talk about we're early in the season. And, and Brunner's another guy from that Purdue program. Uh, not to get not to change the subject for just Purdue. I thought they'd be further along at this point, and I know Rob. We talked a little bit off the air, me and Jeff. There, uh, I, I don't. I don't. I think the rebuild's taking a little bit longer than expected. You know, he said not to get off on a big tangent, but Brunner's. Uh, you know, he's he's getting his name out there in Purdue, trying to help put them back on the map. And he's a guy I definitely expect to probably be definitely a top six guy here. He really should be, given the field in this weight class. Uh, we move on to heavyweight. Top P guy, guy from PA is is Joey Goodhart. Another guy we've talked about in product of Hemfield, District 3 Hemfield. Uh, he's at Drexel right now. He's ranked 19th in the country, 7-3 in the season. He's a two-time NCAA qualifier. Looking at uh, other top-ranked guys, I, I think heavyweight's another weight class that's wide open. There's a lot. There's not a – there's – very top heavy talent with one guy we're going to talk about this we talk about i joke about guys that are quote unquote rob's boys 
Um, when we talk about Gable Stevenson, man, this Rob really lights up. And, you know, I'm, gonna, he, I'm sure he's going to talk about him a little bit, probably more at length than me. Uh, Rob, you wanted to make one prediction about a weight class. I'm going to make one prediction. I'm going to predict Gable Stevenson wins, wins this at 285. He's undefeated, undefeated freshman phenom. Bold. Yeah, bold. I know, bold, bold statement. Uh, he's a freshman phenom if, if you've ever seen one. And to be at this weight class and true freshman, it's just fun to watch. Uh, he's a multiple-time world champ in freestyle, and uh, I'm going to go on a limb. Uh, not even on a limb. I'm just going to say it. Everyone's wrestling for second place. Gable Stevenson's going to going to show up, and he's going to have his way in his weight class. It'd be some great matches for him to you know work on some stuff and get further acclimated to the college wrestling uh, game. But there's not a guy in this weight class I think that that can challenge him. Uh, with that said, uh, moving on to the rest of the ranked guys that we'll talk about, uh, Jerry Haino or Haino from Campbell. He's an intriguing guy. He's a Finn. He's from Finland. From Campbell, he's ranked eighth right now. He hasn't wrestled yet this year, but he's a return qualifier. Went two and two. I think he's poised to make the final against Stevenson if they're on the other side of the bracket. You know, Haino, Haino went two and two last year in Blaze with a win over Tanner Hall from Arizona State. You know, when thinking about it, and, and this guy, you know, two and two, uh, I, I'd really like to see him be that that all American, being all American for Colot and, and a Campbell fighting Camels. Uh, you know, all that's going on there, it's all the good that, that's happening. That program, the new facility that I talked about, I mentioned it on the air when they when they opened it. If you didn't have it, still haven't had a chance to go and look at it, go check out what they're what they got going on there. Bowie's Creek is just. You know, as I say, the creek is rising, and it's just like a lot of a lot of goods happen coming out of there. Uh, moving on, we got uh, only other top ten ranked guy in, at the two eighty five is Connor Jennings from Northwestern. He's number nine ranked wrestler currently. He's two and zero in the season. No real significant wins. And he's a two time NCAA qualifier, and again, two eighty five in, in the Big Ten is always just loaded with with you know, top end talent. And, you know, he's a qualifier, two time qualifier, but you look at down the list of, of the great big 10 heavyweights that have come through in the past few years. And he's had to contend with them. Uh, now he's to contend with them in the season. He got, he contend with them in, at big tens. And, you know, it was kind of always, you know, some back and forth with some of them, but he's a guy who just hasn't put it together and all the way in March just yet. So there you have 97 and 285, Rob, not it's kind of anticlimactic after you get to 184 and then have to go and 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 look into those other two weight classes and it's no disrespect to any of those guys competing it's just 184 like i said just just so much talent that you get you so excited for it and in the 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 talent these uh the top end talent these other weight classes just just not as not as prevalent but give me your take on these two weight classes 97 first of course yeah i think you nailed it the 97 heavyweight probably the two biggest favorites with more and Stevenson going in the tournament. You know, 97, I think Moore's clear favorite. I, I'd be surprised if he lost here. It'll be interesting to see who gets on the other side. Like, this is a big tournament for a guy like Loizo if he can go out, beat Traxler. Bruner lost to uh, Bowman. He's Iowa's backup 84 last week. He didn't look good, but, um, you know, Bruner was just getting back from the world, so maybe he was a little bit rusty or jet lagged. Jake Woodley, he's obviously my guy. Um, you know, he had an injury default out of Journeyman, but I know he'll be back this week. He's feeling a hundred percent. So it'll be interesting to see how he competes with these guys. I think him or Loizo, they're right there with everyone in the field. I- I've seen Woodley Russell Brunner in a freestyle match uh, out in Akron, and yeah, he lost, but he was getting to the legs. He got out freestyled a little bit. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if he could turn the tables here in Folk. And then heavyweight, yeah, you're right, Stevenson. I'm a big fan of the guy. Um, I think he's going to walk through this bracket, but from a PA perspective, same thing with Loizo. You have Goodhart. You know he's going to have to beat guys here like Heinel, uh, Conan, and Jennings that he's going to need to beat in March. So it'll be interesting to see how he stacks up. So, folks, there you have. There's our preview. And as Rob touched on a little bit early on, we're going to we'll decide on the rules for it. Maybe Jeff will moderate the rules, and we'll tweet out what we're doing, the rules, and then we'll start releasing our picks. And at the end, we'll add up the points based upon how accurate or inaccurate we were. And Rob, what do you want? I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm feeling spontaneous. Do you want to, you want to put a friendly wager on this? What are you thinking? Maybe, uh, maybe shoot some gear over to each other. Either some O and J or North Allegheny stuff. Um, 
I could I could go for that. Uh, I was saying maybe uh, since we are fans of rival, somewhat state rival football teams, maybe I can shoot you over some Eagles gear. I'll shoot you O and J gear regardless. Like the, you know, I'm gonna, I'm I'm definitely gonna take care of you and Jeff uh, with that regardless. So uh, and I know you guys will wear it proudly. Well, maybe you, not Jeff. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Maybe you gotta, you know, throw on, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let you pick the Dawkins or Wentz, and you throw on the jersey and, and root on uh, the Eagles, or you know, you want to throw me some Steelers swag, and I'll, I'll wear it and proudly, you know, take my medicine and, and root for the Steelers. I don't know. We can talk about. it. Yeah, we'll fi- we'll figure something out. Okay, good. I want to I want a little skin in the game. I want to make it a little interesting. Uh, so you know, when we when I get down, like I said, it, get down to bracketology. And there's something on the line. I'm not just doing it for fun. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-ADDICTION. No gambling problem whatsoever. Anyway, folks, stay tuned. We're going to switch gears here, and we are going to bring Zach Zavosky on the line and talk wrestling with him, talk about his career, talk about where where his season is so far, where he anticipates it going, what he wants to do after wrestling, you know, what what makes Virginia Tech everything that makes Virginia Tech great. And I'm really looking forward to getting him on. So is Rob and you know it's gonna be uh it's gonna be another great interview with our former PA hammer and current NCAA uh, you know, for Hammer for all intents and purposes ranked fourth in the country. So we're real lucky to have him and taking time out of his busy schedule. Uh for those who don't PA Power fans, he's a great of the Trove graduate, he's a senior at Virginia Tech. He's ranked fourth in the country right now at 184 pounds. And, you know, he's going to be wrestling this weekend at, uh, at Vegas. So, Zach, welcome to the show. Appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, we'll, we're looking forward to, to wrapping with you a little bit. Thanks. Thanks, you guys, for uh, having me. Um, uh, it's going to be great to chat about some of the stuff I've experienced and, you know, just wrestling in general. Hey, Zach, so first question we wanted to get out there for our listeners, why did you choose Virginia Tech? You were a pretty highly sought-after recruit coming out of high school. Uh, you were a stud. I'm a Whippeal guy, so I got to watch you a lot growing up. Uh, ultimately, what led you to uh, to Blacksburg, and you know, what's your experience been like there? Um, so I think I was first contacted by Kevin Dresser, I think my sophomore, junior year kind of, um, whenever I started showing out on the scene a little bit. And I was also close to Solomon Chisco. He's from um, Cannon Mac, Mac area. So I knew him growing up, and I know he, he committed early. And, um, and I was just kind of open to, to, new, to new ideas and experiencing new things. And uh, I took a visit down to Virginia Tech. I've, I took a visit to Virginia, I think Lehigh. Pittsburgh, um, schools like that. And um, I just felt, I think I just felt at home at Virginia Tech. Um, I feel like the connection with the coaches was really important to me, and I feel like um, they they valued me in the lineup and they saw me progressing in my career and, and um, ended up being a successful college athlete. So I think just <clears throat> having a genuine trust and the coaches and and knowing that yeah, this is the area that I wanted to be at, um, I think that's what led me to Virginia Tech. Zach, you mentioned the coaches. Obviously, there was a, a bit of a shift from the time that you got there till now. Uh, what's changed since, you know, Dresser, Hoffman, uh, Zadek, et cetera, left and, you know, some of the new guys came in? Um, yeah, I've definitely experienced some, some uh, different coaching styles. But, you know, I think you can look at wrestling in different different angles. You can approach it in different ways. And uh, definitely Dresser and Zadik and St. John, they all approach it in a little different way, maybe like a more Iowa style, just hard-nosed, physical. Um, but, you know, wrestling is you can, you can compete in a lot of different ways. <clears throat> you have a lot of different strategies, a lot of different techniques. So... Um, even before the Iowa uh, guys came through, we had Coach Hoffman, um, Coach Roby, we had Johnson, and we had I think we had Eric Morrill. So we had a lot of guys come through, and I think it was good for me to just see how these guys performed, how they um, approached the sport, and now it's just um, 
I don't know. It's just a, I think a more relaxed atmosphere, but we still, you know, get in there and get to work and grind with each other. Hey Rob, you and uh, you and Zach here have that in common. Uh, Hoffman, the Hoffman connection. Yeah, Zach, I didn't mention this earlier, but I, I wrestled at Bucknell for Hoffman, so I, I know him pretty well. And then, you know, Joe is, is from the same area as him, so um, we all have a connection to Dave. Yeah, I love Coach Hoffman. I think he was one of the first ones. I think he told me that he brought my name up to Coach Dresser. I think I was a sophomore, and I think he was recruiting in the Pittsburgh area and brought my name up. So always grateful for, for Coach Hoffman. Yeah, good guy. Uh, I'm sure you're well aware he took over to his alma mater, the Hill School here, yeah. where I live in Pottstown. So, you know, I think he's going to do big things there. But. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, Zach, you know, we we're going to change gears and ask, you know, about that, that final year that Hoffman was there in 2016. Obviously, it was a great tournament for Virginia Tech. You guys ended up bringing home a team trophy, uh, the first one you guys have got. Um, but in your pers- from your perspective, you were seated fifth, and ultimately didn't make the podium. You you had a bit of a rough tournament, lost some close matches to Renda and Brown. What was that feeling like, maybe falling short of your goals but having a, a great team tournament? Yeah, that was kind of a crazy year. I started the year um, kind of on a rough, rough foot. Um, lost to some matches by some good guys, but I think the coaches just got behind me and they were always in my ear saying, like, you could, you can do this, you can – you're this good, you can compete with the best guys. And I think throughout, I think whenever I came on the scene in Vegas, I beat three All-Americans, I, I got third. Um, I really started believing in myself a lot more and, you know, just carried it on through the season. I always try and end the season on, a, you know, peaking at the end. And it was just, it was just devastating, I guess. Um, it was awesome being around a great group of guys who made history at Virginia Tech. We got fourth. Um, we, 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 our team was just really good and stacked. I love being a part of that, but just not accomplishing my goals at the end. It was just devastating and heartbreaking. Um, I lost to Renda in the quarterfinals. I beat him twice that year, and then I lost to a national returning finalist by one point both of those were were by one point so you know, it was just that's what the ncaa tournament's like it's just nail biters things get really close and tight and i think uh i was just on the wrong end of that for that tournament but you know i, I rebounded and kind of accepted it and just started moving forward good so zach you're a senior and like you said, you've proven that you can beat the best guys in the country, and you've done it pretty consistently throughout your career. Is there anything you've done differently this year, heading you know heading into the senior season, or that you know maybe you're going to do different in your training this year to to see it through in March to to be there to be uh, peaking in at March, similar to last year. You know, you had a good tournament last year. Uh, you got to the podium. Uh, obviously, your goals are higher this year. So, is there was there any change in training, switch, change in mindset, or anything like that that you know Roby and, and the staff have you know implemented with you or the team? Um, you know, I think just being a senior, I think I'm the last um, person left left from my class that came in four years ago. So, um, just falling into that leadership role. And just having the entire team, the entire Hokie Nation um, community following, um, just being behind me in my career. And they, um, you always want to end at the high note. We've never had a national champion yet, so that's always at the top of my goals. Um, just thinking about that every day. But I think from a training aspect, just being smart. You know, I've been doing this since I was five years old. And... Um, had some different training with different coaches over the last couple of years at Virginia Tech. Uh, we also got a new lifting coach that came in this summer, just doing a little bit differently. I've had some some knee injuries. I think I had four four knee surgeries, three in college. Um, so that that was pretty tough with training and stuff. <clears throat> but I think just listening to my body more and being, I guess, tactical and having a good strategy for matches and knowing what my strengths are 
and where I need to improve and just kind of, you know, trying to perform to my, to my best ability and, you know, just looking forward to putting my best foot out there every time I step out. So speaking of stepping out this weekend, Vegas and your weight class is, you know, loaded and, and you're one of the reasons why it's loaded you know, I think the first five, four, five, six guys ranked in the in the country are, are going to be in that in that bracket. Uh, how how pumped does that get you? How excited do you get to be in a weight class that loaded and be on that stage and and, and go out and you know go head to head with these guys? Yeah, it's definitely exciting. Um, I'm definitely trying to look at it from being grateful for this opportunity and just looking at it as a great opportunity. Um, with these these great competitors that are going to be in my weight class, um, you know, just I think it's my last year, so just looking at it as every time I step out there could be my last time wrestling. You never know what's going to happen, and just enjoying whenever I'm out there because you know it's going to be over pretty soon. So I'm just trying to embrace it, have fun and enjoy some some traveling and trips with friends and family and you know, it's just going to be fun to show kind of what I've been doing and the training I've uh, worked for so to speak of that again you know you're, you're you're giving me some easy segues here winning this weekend win the win the the Vegas Invitational would that you know is that going to put everyone on notice about uh the mission you're on this season um, you know, is, is it first place or bust or, you know, are you, at this point of the season, are you just looking to, to have a good showing and, and feel good about your performance overall? I'm honestly just going into this full force, just trying to win it all. I mean, why not? I've, I've been doing this for so long. Like I just think of it as why not me? Um, I've been doing everything right. And I think just, I mean, I've, I beat the best guys. I beat Martin there before. Um, I'm experienced. I'm feeling healthy. My conditioning is good. My strength. So everything's um, feeling good for me right now. And I'm just, I need to go attack it. And I think just if I, if I win out this tournament, it would just be awesome and just fuel me more throughout the rest of the season and, you know, just put the entire nation on, on notice. Good. I, I love that mindset, Zach. You know, you, you, talking to you, you seem just locked in, and that's that's uh, you know it's a it's a great thing from a fan standpoint to to hear that, like some of those phrases come out of your mouth. So that's awesome. Thank you, Thanks. Zach. You're getting close to the end of the road, at least in college. Do you have any plans to continue wrestling, transition to MMA, coaching? What are your plans after graduation? What do you want to do the rest of your life? You know, I, I really like this area. I'm kind of up in the air with what I want to do exactly from a career standpoint, but, um, I'm not sure about competing really. Um, I'm willing to work, um, in the area, if there's other job opportunities elsewhere, but I think just having wrestling being a part of my life forever, it's always going to naturally draw me close. So, um, I've kind of been networking with, with people around the area and, um, just seeing some opportunities around here so I can maybe come back and help out with, uh, with Roby and, and the S E S E R T C. So just up in the air right now, just looking for opportunities, but trying to be the best, um, that I can be with wrestling right now. And I think everything else will fall in order. What are you studying, Zach? So my major is called packaging systems and designing, um, uh, minor in, industrial design also so it's just a broad field obviously with amazon starting to take over pretty much everything it's only growing from here but um looking for rules is like a like a packaging engineer a packaging scientist or applications expert or something like that and also just recently i've been talking to corning incorporated jared hot our 197 last year he actually works in christiansburg at corning so um i'm just trying to start to get knowing that company and see if i can stick around the area a little bit 
uh, which would be, you know, I think the best option for me. Uh, what I would like to do the most right now is just stick around wrestling a little bit after college, um, help out as much as I can in the room, but also progress my career. Does Hot ever still come and wrestle with you guys? Yeah, he comes in. He has some uh, some rough shift hours sometimes, but um, it's always good seeing him come in the room. I'm really close with him still. So basically nothing's changed with him and then Walls, I guess, coming down to weight. You're, you never got to be like the big bad senior beating up on all the freshmen. You still have those guys uh, to wrestle with. Yeah, it's always a challenge. No matter how good you think you're feeling on a certain day, you still got tie walls to, to put you in place or Jared will come in and uh, be as strong as he ever was. But, yeah, that's what Roby's trying to build. And um, he's talked to me about getting that kind of in my plans in the future. And, um, you know, I'm just open for, for stuff right now. So last question on my end, Zach, let's say you're on the coaching staff or, or you have a, a top tier recruit that you're hosting for a weekend. What's your pitch to come to Virginia tech or let's say there's 17 year old Zach Zavatsky out there. Like, what do you tell yourself about like, Hey man, you got to get here. Like what's the big sell for you? I think, um, Virginia tech, like the campus and the environment. And it's almost like you're driving in the middle of nowhere through the mountains and then, and then Blacksburg comes up and then it's just like a different world, but just being a part of Hokie nation and going to the big football games and walking across campus and all the buildings are just amazing. And also, you know, just all the resources here. We have a a great room. We have nutrition staff. Um, You know, we have all these rehab facilities, doctors, trainers, uh, cold tubs. And, you know, it's just everything you need is in one place. And, I think everybody in Blacksburg is supportive of the athletics a lot too. So um, we have a great athletic director too, who's constantly growing the athletics, um, always adding on, always changing the facilities. So it's it's just exciting to be a part of and um, kind of missing out on some of the new stuff they've been building. I um, thought I could be a part of it, but they just, they just keep building some new stuff. It's going to be awesome. But I think in a couple of years, our facilities and athletics will be one of the top in the, in the country for sure. Well, Zach, again, we, we thank you for taking some time on your week. We're you know glad we were able to make this happen, get you on before you guys hit the, uh, hit the airwaves or air uh, and fly to <laughs> uh, Vegas this weekend. Wishing nothing but the best of luck to you and uh, and the squad as you guys head out there, and you know, hoping to see you bring home uh, the the gold and uh, you know, continue on this mission you're on. And uh, you know, we'll be watching and, and hopefully maybe get to check in with you later in the season. Yeah, good luck, Zach. Thank you for having me on. All right, folks, that'll wrap it up for another week here in the open room with Rob and Joe. Thanks for tuning in. As always, visit pawrestling.com for all your wrestling needs. Follow us on Twitter at pa power wrestle. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook and check us out on Instagram. Don't forget, fans, you can subscribe to the PA Power podcast on iTunes and listen to all three shows on Spotify. If you want to send any questions or suggestions for the show, email us at collegetalk at pawrestling.com. Thanks, folks and fans. Take care and have a great week.